Hey everybody, Notorious here. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'll teach you everything you need to know about the hitch climber climbing system, how to set it up, what you need, and different techniques for staying safe and being efficient in the canopy. So let's get right to it. Before I demonstrate how to assemble a hitch climber system, let's briefly discuss all the materials that you're going to need. First and foremost, and probably most obvious, is a rope. You need a rated arborist rope, something that is rated for life support between 11 and 13 millimeter diameter is ideal. And you can do anything from 16 strand to 48 strand, whatever tickles your fancy, but it needs to be a rated arborist rope. And I have here a 16 strand that I just recently bought. Um, so it's nice and shiny. And I bought this rope specifically for moving rope systems because it's 12.8 millimeters diameter or half an inch for you Americans and it's nice and thick and that really helps when you're doing a lot of hip thrusting or you know having to manipulate the rope the way you do with moving rope systems. Now another important feature that your rope must have is either a sewn or spliced termination. You cannot use a termination knot for this. The manufacturer of the hitch climber specifically states that it cannot be used with the termination knot and i'll show you why in just a moment so you need either a sewn or spliced termination and i highly suggest that you spend a little extra money on a splice termination this one is spliced and it's got a much neater sleeker profile and they're just less bulky than sewn terminations and that can come in handy if you ever want to start using a pulley saver or a friction saver. I have up above me right now a friction saver installed and this splice makes it so much easier to install it just slips through that small ring like butter. Really quickly, for those who are interested, this rope is the Notch Sasquatch Max. Moving along, we have two carabiners. You're gonna need at least two carabiners for this system. And I would highly recommend that you use oval carabiners. And I'll show you why in just a moment. They should be at least double action or in this case, I have two triple action carabiners made by DMM or quadruple action. They make those as well. And then we have the main feature, which is the DMM hitch climber pulley. And this pulley has three attachment points that you can see clearly up here and a high efficiency pulley below it and this has swing plates that allow for easy midline installation onto the rope. The last thing you'll need is a eye-to-eye -eye prusik, sometimes known as a hitch cord or friction cord um, and these are basically lengths of special material that absorb heat really well. Uh, they're called aramid fibers and sometimes a mix of aramid fibers and polyester or nylon. And these special fibers can withstand pretty much any amount of friction you give them on the rope without melting. So that makes them unique and special. So you can't just use a length of polyester, you need a hitch cord. Um, 
and you can see it has two eyes on either end and these are sometimes spliced like my rope or in this case they are sewn. With all that out of the way let's talk about how to build your hitch climber system. There are a lot of places you can start but I like to start with the friction hitch and you use your eye to eye to tie the friction hitch. This can be any friction hitch of your choosing but it should be a climbing hitch not a rigging hitch or something like the prusik where the legs come out on the same side and is just prone to binding in general. If you look at my library, I have a huge selection, enormous selection of different unique and original climbing hitches, but the mainstream ones include the distal, the Michu Akan, and my personal favorite, the Catalyst Hitch. There's also the Valdetain Tress or VT and the Cornell Hitch. So all of those are pretty popular mainstream hitches that you can choose from. In my collection, there are also a number of different hitches. I'll be demonstrating with one of my hitches that I created and tested. So this is the Blizzard Hitch. And again, you just need to pick one hitch at first and perfect your tying method and master dressing and setting it correctly. And I'll explain what all that means right now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look and see which end of your rope does not have the sewn or spliced termination. And you're going to tie a friction hitch on it, okay? So again, I'm just gonna tie one of my hitches and this is the blizzard hitch. You wanna take your time when you're tying friction hitches because you want the legs to come out nice and even at even lengths and you also just want to make sure that you're tying it correctly and now here i'm dressing and setting it which basically means that i'm making sure that there's not too much or too little tension in the coil and that you know these second marls here are nice and tight against this rope. So once you've tied your friction hitch, the next step is to just quickly give it a few tests up and down the rope. You want it to slide up effortlessly and then when pulled down, you want it to lock. So this is tied, dressed and set perfectly. And We'll do another test of it, you know, before we leave the ground. Um, and so now we can install our pulley and our first carabiner. And the way this works is we're going to pull apart the sheaves on the pulley to give access to the inside. And we're going to place it on our rope, like, just like that. Okay, and then we can bring it up below our friction hitch, and we're going to put one of the eyes on either side of the bottom hole. So you can see the two eyes here, and we want one on either side of the bottom hole. So we're going to take our oval carabiner capture the first eye, bring it through the hole, capture that second eye. And now at this point, I like to reorient my carabiner so that I don't have to, just to make it easier to access for my bridge. So I spin it around like that. That way the gate will open 
at the bottom and not at the top. So, all right, we've got our friction hitch and we've got our pulley and we've got our first carabiner installed. The final step is to look up, make sure that your system isn't crossed or twisted because you want this to be a nice straight up and down system. And what you're gonna do is take your, either your spliced or sewn termination and we're going to connect it to the middle hole on the hitch climber pulley, okay? I'll talk about the other hole in a minute, but for general purpose use, where you're not gonna be using this to connect your lanyard to it, which again, I'll talk about in a second, um, it's best to put it in the middle hole because it keeps things a little separated better. So there are two ways you could go about doing this. You could either first clip your carabiner to the middle hole and then connect the eye, or you could do what I do, which is I clip the carabiner to the eye and then rotate it around and clip the carabiner then to the middle hole. And the reason I do that is so that if I'm ever in a situation where I need to advance this system, what I can do is um, take this carabiner off and I can very quickly and very easily have a nice weight at the end of my line to help me throw it over a limb. So that's just a little quick tip. All right, now your system is fully set up and the next step is to connect it to yourself by your harness. Um, and then just take out some slack and weight it. And you can see this is holding beautifully. And I'll show you on the, try and show you on the GoPro. This is what it looks like. And it's a very streamlined, sleek system. And I really love it. The way this system basically functions is similar to with regular open and closed systems that you might be familiar with that involve friction hitches. Um, with this, you will pull down on the strand that is coming out of the friction hitch and that'll create tension in here. And then you just pull out that slack with the help of the slack tending pulley and then you're safe on the line again, it, it'll hold. So pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, you do have to do some hip thrusting sometimes and I hate hip thrusting, I really hate it. I'm more of an SRT guy. You, you get some ground and then in order to descend, you simply just lightly depress your um, friction hitch up here. And you can see the reason why you can't use a regular tied termination and the reason that they basically require that you use either a sewn or splice termination is because the knot would be right here and it would get right up against this friction hitch. And that could be potentially pretty dangerous because I've seen um, people tie those and then the knot get ca just caught on the top of the friction hitch and it causes it to slip. And that could send you plummeting to the ground. So that's just a huge no-no. 
So going back to that third hole on the hitch climber pulley, that has a really cool and helpful purpose where basically, let's say you want to use it to connect to your lanyard. All you have to do is take the carabiner from the middle pulley hole and put it on the top pulley hole, okay? And once you've done that, that opens up this hole here for a variety of different applications. So once I've moved this carabiner, I can take my lanyard and clip it onto the hitch climber pulley on the open available middle hole. And then I can take the end of my lanyard and put it around a limb or a stem or a spar. And because my lanyard has a Pinto pulley here, which has a Beckett, I can just clip the end of my lanyard to it. And now I have this really cool streamlined system where I can work in a sort of triangulated position or where, you know, this can, this double rope system, the hitch timer system can be holding my weight and this can be help, help me to position me. And, you know, again, this is fully adjustable and, you know, this could also be adjusted as well. And, you know, you can take in slack and it's pretty neat. Uh, if you don't have a pulley with a Beckett, what you could do is you could um, take off or rather connect the end of your um, lanyard to maybe your bridge ring, something like that. I'm going to do a quick demo of how one typically climbs with this type of system, the hitch climber system. And keep in mind that I almost exclusively climb SRS, also known as SRT. So I'm really not that good at this. So um, prepare to laugh at me. That's okay. I can handle it. I can take it. Um, but I know how to do it. I'm just fat, overweight, and just not just not that good at it because I just never really use this system all that often unless I'm already up in the canopy. So with that excuse out of the way, <laughs> um, all you're gonna do is take out as much slack as you can while you're on the ground by just pulling the slack out using the help of the slack tending pulley. And then if you're hanging in midair, you're gonna have to do some serious hip thrusting which again, I'm not very good at. Um, I hate hip thrusting with a dying passion, undying passion. Um, and so, yeah. Um, the next step is to just get yourself off the ground. If you're able to be close up enough to a tree to where you can put your feet against it, you're in a good position. That's the best position you can be. So it's good to sometimes install your uh, his climber set up so where you can be up against a tree to help you propel yourself up. Okay, so let's get ourselves a little more um, up. And I'm doing that by pulling on, I'll show you on the GoPro. I'm pulling down on this strand here and then pulling it out the slack with this strand here. Okay, once you get off the ground, all you're gonna do is you're going to pull on this strand right here. And then once you've gotten a little bit of slack, you're going to pull it out like that. And then just repeat.
Oh, this is a slippery rope. Oh, this rope is brand new and it's really slippery. Anyways, that's my quick demo. And then just to get down, all you're gonna do is make sure you have this in your non-dominant hand and you're just gonna go down to the ground. So pretty simple. Um, very exhausting, which is why I prefer SRS or SRT so much better. Um, so much better. This has been my episode on the hitch climber system, how to assemble and basic applications and use cases. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button, please subscribe, consider donating. I'm trying to buy a dynamometer which is a force measurement device because I'm trying to create videos where I measure forces and do brake testing. And as always, be sure to check out my channel for more hitch how-tos, not tutorials, and climbing videos. Bye.